Okay, hi guys, welcome to my video about how to jailbreak the iPod Touch 2nd gen. And as you may know, the jailbreak came out for like two weeks ago. The team released a thing called Red Snow Light version, and that means that it is the third jailbreak just out, which means that you have to reply a patch every time you reboot your iPod. But I don't think it's a big problem because I don't reboot. Uh, I don't reboot at all if I don't have to when I'm downloading something. But, um, uh, so this is my tutorial about how to jailbreak. So, this is my brother's iPod. So, I jailbroke it for him and I will be re jailbreaking it. So, this is who is jailbroken. I'm gonna show Cydia my crappy camera. Here. There you go, Cydia, I see it. So, I'm gonna. <coughs> Uh, real jailbreak it. So, uh, uh, first I'm gonna go through uh, what you need to jailbreak it, and then the whole jailbreak, and then how to boot your iPod after jailbreaking it. So, uh, first you need to download a couple of things. Uh, you need to download a thing called Red Snow Light uh, Map. It's a .exe file. I know it's a map with a couple of files in it that you will need. You also have to upgrade to 2.2.1 to do this jailbreak and you also have to uh, download a custom custom uh, uh, 2.2.1 ipf.bu uh, file and both of these files you save both files onto your desktop and you also need to install the latest drivers for lib something called lib usb you can google it or uh, now i will post a link in the description instead that's easier and uh, the, remember that this is for Windows Vista, no, <laughs> Windows XP only, so don't try this if you're running Vista, uh, or if you do, it's on your own hand, because I can't uh, take care of your Vista owner, because sometimes your computer goes uh, fucked up when you're trying to install the USB, so you uh, don't try this if you don't want to break your uh, Vista computer, but for you with XP, let's move on. So, when you downloaded these things, you download your uh, IPSW file onto your desktop. So, do the Red Snow Light. You extract the Red Snow Light the map. Uh, so, you get uh, another zip file. You get this ordinary folder. And uh, this IPSW file, you have to rename it. It should be uh, like an iTunes logo. So, rename it to Original FW. Original FW in one word. The important about this is that you have to rename it to original with small letters and as FW with big letters only. So O R E G E N A L F W and FW with big letters. Okay, uh, that's very important because otherwise uh, your computer uh, you will get an error message in step one. So now open up uh, Red Snow Light, the extracted, extracted folder. And there you see you got three files. You open the folder called Core. Then in this folder, you drag and drop your original FW file into this. Now you also uh, connect your iPod to, um, to your computer. And uh, then next thing is open this exe file in the core folder called Red Snow Light. So open it. Then it will give you three options, which is file system patch, jailbreaking preparation, and iBoot. So click one for file system patch, and then hit enter. And then it says um, uh, file system preparation. Press enter to continue. So it press enter. Then it will say hashing IPSW if you done everything correctly and if you get an error message it this is probably because you haven't named it the right way or put it in the wrong directory so uh, <clears throat> this will take like five minutes or so so uh, when it's uh, patching it so i will be back when it's finished okay okay so now i'm back after patching it and now you should have two ipsw files in the core folder and one original FW that you created in the first step, and also a jailbroken FW file that has been added. And the next thing is to open Red Snow Light again. 
then hit 2 for jailbreak preparation 2 and then it says get ready to hold your home button and power for uh, 10 seconds and press enter so press enter and a countdown will start uh, just ignore this countdown because it's wrong <coughs> so just do it with me instead so we're gonna hold home which is here and power which is here for 10 seconds then you wanna let go of the oh sorry for that oh, really sorry about that I'm just gonna put my camera right position again so uh, so you wanna hold the power and home for 10 seconds then you wanna let go of power keep on holding home Keep on holding it until you hear this window sound, which is like new hardware found. The sound you know, the din, something. So just keep on holding. I think it would take uh, eight seconds or something, but it doesn't harm you. I put if you hold longer. So just keep on holding. So here we go. I'm gonna count to three, and then I'm gonna start. Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let it go. Keep on holding. There it was. You heard the sound? Keep on holding for a couple of minutes, seconds. Uh, that should be fine. Yeah. You can uh, release home when the iTunes pop up and says iTunes has recovered an iPod in recovery mode. So you click OK and take the down again. Now it says press any key to continue. So click enter. And then it will come up with my numbers. And then it will say replug your iPod and press enter when it turns white. So take it out. Hit the sound and click it back in. Then your screen is white. That's good. And then you click enter. Oh, by the way. Many people doesn't get to do this step, the watch screen. This is probably because you haven't LibUSB installed correctly. But I can help you if you have problems with that, okay? So click enter. Then it says re entering recovery mode. Starting command prompt. So now you want to type in ARM7 with the number 7 underscore GO. Go. And uh, I will post this in the description, so it's the safest if you just copy paste these commands. Arm7, or it's go, and you click enter. Wait, this iPhone, then the dollar sign to come up again. Now it's arm7, just like before, underscore stop. Arm7, underscore stop. Now, control C, press control, and then C. Then it will say, do you want, do you wish to cancel? Then you uh, answer N, which is no. So N, click enter. And now it says, you're now ready to go into iTunes to restore it to your uh, previously created IPSW file. You just hold shift and click restore in iTunes to begin the process. Okay, so you're now successfully passed. Step 2, okay.